Hello and welcome to another video. I recently came across and purchased about six of these HP EliteBook A40 G6 laptops. And after spending a little bit of time with them, I can actually say that I think I like them a little bit more or just as much as some of the ThinkPads I've been going through recently. I know that's a bold move. I've covered a lot of ThinkPads on my YouTube channel and my admiration for the brand is actually pretty high. ThinkPads are really quality laptops in the refurbished market. But at the same time, I'm not exclusive to one brand of laptop and I'm always interested in something that performs well, looks good, and is pretty durable. So in this video, we'll go over what I like about this laptop and we'll do things like take a look at the motherboard and consider what kind of upgrades are available. And we'll do some things like gaming and some workstation tasks to let you know if it's a good choice for you in 2025 and moving forward. So let's get into it and let's take a look at what's installed in this laptop. So the first thing I like about this laptop is the 1920 by 1080 IPS display panel. As you can see, it is pretty bright and the side viewing angles are pretty decent. It's hard to replicate this on this camera, but looking at it in person is a pretty nice experience. Viewing my own videos in all the 1080p glory that I can offer is a pleasant experience. On the spec sheet, it is noted that there is a 250 nits and 400 nits version of the 1080p display. Now I have no way to measure this. The panel appears to be very bright. I want to lean towards 400 nits, but honestly, I don't know. All I do know is that it looks pretty crisp and I like it. The second thing I like about this laptop is the keyboard. For too long, my experience and opinion on HP keyboards was ruined by the cheap, cheap notebooks that they kept putting out generation after generation. Typing on those was kind of awful. Oh, and uh, before we go on, the backlit keyboard is actually really nice. Right now it's set to illuminate every time I touch the touchpad or, or hit a key. I find that typing on this keyboard is a pretty nice experience. The layout is quite nice and the keys feel pretty responsive. There's even a little track point here in the middle of the keyboard, just like a ThinkPad. So if I'm missing the ThinkPad experience, well, look no further. So otherwise, this keyboard is not particularly unique in its features. It does also include all the usual second functions. I was also impressed with the touchpad. It's pretty intuitive and it feels really nice to use. And also after using it for a while, sometimes I have some kind of oily fingers and I didn't see a lot of marks or residue that I had to clean off. So that's a big plus. One side note about the track point, we don't have the button in between the two left and right buttons. So scrolling up and down web pages and documents isn't quite the same, or at least I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Just for note, there's the fingerprint reader. So above the keyboard is the grill for the speakers and it's by a brand called Bang & Olufsen. Now I admit I have not heard of this brand before. Apparently they are a high-end Danish speaker company. The quality of these speakers are actually pretty good. gaming motherboard. I've got the rig connected to power with no portable monitor set up. I don't think it's going to matter. Again, the symptom supposedly is that it powers. I could easily use this laptop as my daily driver, although my work needs are not really that intense, which is why we'll test out DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake later on in the video. I'm also a pretty big fan of the case material. Aluminum is a nice touch. And as I said before, I seem to leave a lot less visible marks compared to this uh, T14 Gen 1 ThinkPad. By the way, I'm not talking negative about this ThinkPad. I use one myself. I'm just saying this material is pretty nice. And onto the IO on the right side of the laptop, we have a SIM card tray, microphone and headphone combo jack, one times USB 3.1 Gen 1, which doubles as a charging port for devices, a HDMI 1.4B port, Gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port. This port right here is labeled as a docking connector. I'm not entirely sure what can be connected. I'll have to research that. A USB Type-C lightning port, and there's the input for the power adapter. On to the left side, we have the Kensington lock. Here's a grill for the air exhaust for the CPU fan. Another USB 3.1 Gen 1. 
And this would be the spot for a smart card reader if there would be one installed. And while we're taking a look at the size of the laptop, we can see there's some extra branding on the back, which is kind of a nice aesthetic feature. And on the bottom, we have that same aluminum material, which is nice. Some rubber feet to keep the laptop in place and provide some passive airflow. And this grill right here is some air intake for the CPU fan and other components. Okay, so we're going to take the bottom panel off and take a look at the motherboard and go over some potential upgrade options. What I like about this design is the easy access. It's very similar to this X280. So you just need a Phillips head screwdriver and we'll remove the visible screws. What I like to see is that there's no screws hidden underneath the little rubber pads or rubber strips like with those cheaper HP notebooks that I referenced earlier. And a flat piece of plastic like this iFixit tool or a plastic guitar pick will do nicely in loosening the tabs on the bottom panel. Again, shout out to the case material. The sturdiness feels like I'm not going to break and tear the plastic pieces apart. Here's an overhead shot of what you'll be looking at. And starting over here, there's an M.2 port for an NVMe solid state drive. There's two DIMM slots so you can easily upgrade the RAM. And up here we have the cable connection for the speakers. There's an additional M.2 port for a WWAN card. And just in case you're wondering, no, it's not possible to install an additional SSD in that port. And here's the M.2 port for the Wi-Fi card. It's lucky that this came installed with a AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card with Bluetooth 5.0. So that's a pretty good added bonus. Don't really need to think about upgrading this one. And over here we have some cable connections from the display panel to the motherboard. And below that is the heatsink for the CPU fan. So I've already done this, but you can easily unscrew these four screws to apply new thermal paste. Just a heads up, if you are doing things like replacing the RAM, SSD, or applying new thermal paste, it's good practice to disconnect the battery first. Over here is the board for the power button. You can see there's a ripping cable connection to the motherboard. And here is another ripping cable connection from a USB port to the motherboard. Here we have the CMOS battery that's plugged into this portion of the board. And over here is a ribbon cable connection to the fingerprint reader. And let's unplug and remove the battery to get a better look of what's underneath. So just a heads up, if you're removing the battery for any reason, it is a Torx screw, not a Phillips head screw, so you'll need one of those. So I took out this little plastic placeholder here that's in the smart card reader slot. And this is kind of an interesting board. You can see there's LED lights down here and you can see that there is a ribbon cable connection to the motherboard. And there's also a ribbon cable connection here that is connected to a board either right beside on top of or connected to the touchpad. This section of the board is actually empty and I'm guessing that is where you could either install or replace this board entirely to be able to use this smart card reader. As you can see here in this eBay listing, there is one part of the assembly missing. This ribbon cable here connects to the touchpad buttons. And the ribbon cable in the middle of the back of the touchpad connects to this little PCB here and further connects to the motherboard. I'm not too sure what the purpose of this is. I, I haven't spent too much time looking for it online. It does say Anatel on it which is a tech company. If somebody can enlighten me in the comments, that would be greatly appreciated. I need some expertise here. But anyway, it seems that the touchpad is pretty easy to access and replace. You would just need to remove these screws on the brackets and you'd be good to go. That's pretty much all I'm gonna cover here. My final note being that the accessibility of upgrades and hardware replacement is the hallmark of a good laptop design. So I'm gonna put this back together and we'll get to the next part of the video. All right, the laptop is put back together. Now it's time to do the video encoding and video rendering tests with DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake. Let's check out those results.
All right, so now it's time to test out some gaming. I've got a mouse plugged in. My Steam library is loaded up onto this NVMe adapter connected via the USB Type-C Thunderbolt port. And to record the gameplay footage, I've got this HDMI cable plugged in and I'll be capturing on my workstation PC over here via a Elgato PCIe capture card. And I'm going to keep the test reasonable. I'll be testing out Half-Life and Portal 2. I'd like to showcase some games that will run very well. Uh, not games that'll run okay, because we're looking into the future here, and in 2025, kind of like the mid-tier gaming on a laptop like this is going to be a little limited, however, there is a plethora of older or lighter titles that you can play, so let's check that out. So, would I recommend using this laptop in 2025? Absolutely, I would. And just for reference, myself personally, I could see myself using it for general use, web surfing, YouTube videos, using things like Microsoft Office, and also doing some light video editing on the road. You just have to manage your expectations for video rendering, you'll be waiting a little bit longer. But to be honest, I'm not on deadlines, I just do this more as a hobby. Hopefully this helps guide your decision on whether or not this is a good fit for you. My only advice would be to not pay too much for it, and hopefully that's a possibility wherever in the world that you live. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you have a great day.